<laughs> Without a doubt, the highest peak in strength arm wrestling has ever seen. Levan Saganishvili. A perfect record in supermatch arm wrestling can anyone stop the Georgian Hulk? Man, Levan's gonna fucking murder me. Monstrous, super strong, maybe he's impossible to beat. The super heavyweights with the abilities and spirit of a lightweight. At 400 pounds, this man with specific arm wrestling strength possesses physicality unlike ever seen before. His legacy is growing, it is being set in stone. Without question, the strongest to ever do it. Levon Saganashvili represents a stark example of arm wrestling's physical evolution. The only weak link in Levon Saganashvili's game. It's hard for me to say it, but... I'm going off, and honestly, off the amount of chatter that I've seen around this subject. And, and like the thumbnail of this video suggests, I'm talking about his wrist. Now, I struggle to say that because his wrist is the biggest wrist in arm wrestling. Some 11-inch wrist, Levon Saganishvili's genetics in this respect, uh, they're astronomical. But is the wrist his one weak link? Now, nine months ago, if you weren't aware, Levon Saganishvili had a partial rupture of one of the tendons of the wrist flexors when he was wrist curling 100 kilos. Now, interestingly, he shared a video where he kind of described it. He said, look, there was a, an injury to the tendon. The tendon is still safe. It's going to take about six weeks worth of recovery. Um, and we haven't really heard anything about it since. Now, the only other interesting factor that I've noticed is that I haven't seen him posting videos doing that wrist curl that he used to do. He used to love it, he used to do it often. Big, heavy wrist curl on his knee. We haven't seen him do that. So is there a weak link there? Is that the one avenue Levan is cautious about? Is he not training it because he is now spooked about that injury? Is he still tender? Is he vulnerable there? What does it mean for the match? Will Devon target it? Will Levan not have an issue with it? Will he have an issue with it? All these questions have been bubbling up. I've been noticing them bubbling up in the comments sections of previous videos where we've discussed the powers and the balance of uh, each of the attributes that these two guys have. And as weird as it seems, there might be some valid nature to this claim that the wrist the 11-inch wrist of Levan Saganashvili, is it his weak link? Now let's talk for a moment about why this could be a problem for Levan. Levan is going to use, broadly speaking, two fundamental strengths to try to deny Devon Larratt the ability to defeat him. They are going to come in the form of bicep-driven, brachioradialis-driven uh, back pressure, and wrist flexion. Those two things combined are really are needed for Levan in order to deny the pronation and the rise of Devon. Now, this can be a big problem. Where, like, like as John Brzezank put it, I saw John talking the other day with Engen Terzi. He said it's just going to come down to whether Levan's wrist flexion is greater than Devon's back pressure and pronation. This is really true of that initial battle. That is the first fight that's going to happen. That is the fight that is going to open the door for side pressure. If Levan's wrist flexion is dominant, he can go sideways easy. If Levan's wrist flexion is exposed, Devon will move sideways and we'll, have to, and we'll see Levan in a very awkward defensive position that we haven't seen him really have to be in before. So this is why the wrist is so critical because this is where the main fight is going to happen. Levan knows it. Devon knows it. We, we all know it. So the fact that this wrist injury is in the past, the fact that we haven't seen Levan returning to that, does mean there's a question there. And, and, and I, I admit, I see it. I see that as the question. But look, there are other ways for Levan to protect things. There are other ways for him to move that won't 
won't max it out to a 100 kilo wrist flexion requirement. I mean, Devin's not packing 100 kilos of back pressure. So it's not like he's going to need to use wrist flexion to that same degree. So for the Levan fans, look, there's that place that you can rest as well. But it is a factor, and it's something that might be playing on his mind. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the biomechanics of wrist flexion. Uh, in specific reference to Levan against Devon, he is going to be posted up, right? He's not going to be low-handing. He's going to be bicep-driven, brachioradialis-supported, wrist up, hand squeeze, fingers tight, wrist flexion. It is wrist flexion as the shorter-armed man. Remember, Levan is the shorter-armed man in this situation. So Devon, who will have the low hand, will be pivoting off his elbow onto his tricep side, aiming to crack the wrist of Levan. Now, if Levan's wrist goes this way, Levan is forced into a lane where we haven't seen him have to arm wrestle, where he's dead wrist defending, shoulder forward blocking, maybe flop pressing, Todd Hutchins style side pressure perhaps, all these lanes that we've never seen Levan have to pull in before. They may exist, but we don't know. But we certainly know the chances of Devon Larratt winning go up if Levan's wrist goes like this. Now, Levan can, he can deter that threat with bicep and with rise. These two things will uh, play part of the, the role of disengaging Devon's rising and rolling pronation. But don't get me wrong, the critical strength is going to be wrist flexion. The bicep, the brachialis, the wrist rise, they are all, let's call it, supporting strengths. These are things that aren't going to be the reason Devon's pronation collapses. They are all platforms from which the wrist flexion will launch from. Wrist flexion will be the critical battle against Devon's pronation. If Devon's pronator gets turned down, it's over. If Devon's trying to roll and Levan cups him down, it's good night. Levan's muscular strength, his muscular peak force, his explosivity will be far too much for Devon if Devon's top roll is turned down and Devon is open and exposed. He just doesn't have the arm to compare to Levan. So that battle, that wrist flexion battle, is so very important for Levan. If it curls in, happy days. If it stays flat, it's hard to go sideways. I promise you, when you are the guy that is the shorter arm and you launch with back pressure and you squeeze hard with your wrist, if your wrist stays flat, I'll tell you right now, it is a risk to go sideways. If you go anywhere sideways, you run the risk of this happening. Or if your opponent's creeping in on you, you run the risk of that happening. And either one of those things for Levan is a bad thing. Levan does not want that to happen. So if his wrist is flat, he is going to be red lining on wrist flexion and he is going to be pausing and holding back on the launch of side pressure until he feels that wrist becomes secure. One of the most important things in arm wrestling is don't go sideways until your hand is secure. And all I mean by secure is that when you go sideways, the condition of your hand won't change because if you go sideways and something changes, you lose traction to your power. The rubber on the road, eh, no good. You can't put your maximum side pressure and finishing forces in. So Levan, a lot of that finishing force or access to his finishing power hinges on the ability of his wrist flexion. So it's crucial. You, you just can't deny that it's crucial. The one thing I said before, Levan's injury, it happened at a 100 kilo wrist curl, right? That's a big deal. I said it before, Le Levan's not going to have to contain a 100 kilo wrist curl. Devon does not possess that capability, nor does any arm wrestler at the top of the table, 100 kilos of rise and roll. Some people might say Omi's is close, but look, the form and all that sort of thing, very, very different. The point being, Levan is probably only going to have to contain maybe 60 kilos worth of force in his hand and wrist. Now, 60 kilos sounds very safe for Levan in an injury sense. But the, the fact that there was an injury, the fact that he hasn't focused on that training, the fact that the fact that we're talking about it will plant a seed of doubt in some people's minds. But maybe it will also, he will just brush them off. Look, 
at the end of the day, risk flexion versus pronation is where this battle is at. And uh, there is a question there. You know, if I'm speaking openly and honestly, as I've made this video and sort of rolled my thoughts out to myself, it's become evident to me that I, I don't think it's a problem. Look, I started this video with a little bit of concern. I started this video thinking, oh, maybe, maybe all the people in the comment section who have been saying, hey, have you realized or why aren't we talking about his wrist injury? You can't come back from a wrist injury like that and be the same. All those thoughts, I, I, I'm calm in them again. I'm calm in them again. I think Levan has not gone back to that heavy training because of the risk of injury. And he realized that, that he's, his tendon was really at its limit with a 100 kilo wrist curl. There are other ways to train your wrist. There are other ways to continue to develop that. And at the end of the day, as we've said, you don't need that 100 kilos wrist curl in a match. You need far less than that as long as it's supported by other muscles as well. So I think that, I think that it's safe for Levi. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see this wrist injury rear its ugly head and be a reason the match goes any one way or the other. I think we will not hear of it again. And I think it won't even be noticed in the match. It's not to say Devin won't talk about it or the fans won't talk about it or that Devin won't target it and try to use it as a wedge. Maybe he will. Um, I don't know. Either way, let me know your thoughts. Is this wrist injury something spooking you? If you're a Levan believer, are you worried about that? Or is it just the old news and he's going to rip Devin's arm off anyway? Let me know your thoughts, guys. Thank you for subscribing.